Now, from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Coming up, we get an update from Lincoln Police on the terrible crash on O Street last night. Plus, we spoke to one person who saw it all unfold. And later, Lincolnites who honor those who have fallen this Memorial Day. And we hear the story of one community coming together to repair a storm battered cemetery ahead of today's ceremonies. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. A devastating crash on O Street, leaving two people dead and 20 others hospitalized in Lincoln overnight during this year's AmeriCruz. It's our top story this evening as more details to continue to be released. Lincoln police say two women in their early 20s were killed in a crash at the intersection of O and 52nd Streets. Just before 11 last night, a black Ford Taurus driven by an 18 year old man from Omaha was traveling westbound on O Street before it collided with the Toyota Corolla as the driver made a left turn. The impact sent vehicles onto the sidewalk, striking a crowd of people. The Ford initially rolled onto its top pinning two victims underneath. It's difficult to identify who the patients are because there were people all over the place. So that was a challenge for our crews. LPD Police Chief Teresa Ewens confirms that the vehicles involved in the collision were not participating in the AmeriCruz event, but added that the future of AmeriCruz in Lincoln will change and look different. We will be changing a lot of things in regards to people that are coming to Lincoln to cause havoc like that. It's not, it's not acceptable. And yes, things will change. In total, 20 bystanders were injured in the collision. One is in critical but stable condition. AmeriCruz has been going on in Lincoln since the mid 1990s. Police say the investigation is ongoing and we will continue to bring you the latest updates on our website and Channel 8 media pages. Witnesses say 50 to 100 people were standing on the sidewalk there at 52nd and O Streets when the crash happened late last night. Amber Vasek of Lincoln was one of them. She was getting ready to leave for the night when the crash collided, when the cars collided. She said the scene was chaotic and traumatic. It's something Amber says she will never be able to forget. I was frozen. I just stood there and was just like, what in the heck just happened? Everybody was screaming, crying, running this way, running that way, people just running across the street, running from everywhere. And I literally felt like I was in a movie when I was just paralyzed and everybody was just coming at me and I just didn't really know what to do. She said children were near the incident, standing there on the sidewalk, playing with chalk. Amber said emergency crews responded within minutes and she believes because of that, lives were saved. Flowers have been left at the scene in memory of the two victims who lost their lives. As hard as it is for many to believe, especially those whose loss is still raw, I promise you the day will come when the memory of your loved one, your patriot, will bring a smile to your lip before it brings a tear to your eye. That's when you know you're going to make it. Freedom is worth the sacrifice. Democracy is not perfect. It's never been good, perfect. But it's worth fighting for, if necessary, worth dying for. On this Memorial Day, President Biden visited the Arlington National Cemetery, addressing the nation and laying a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Today is the day to remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. At the Lincoln Memorial Cemetery earlier today, people gathered to do just that. A very windy day as veterans and community members gathered to pay respects for the fallen service men and women. Girls from the local Girl Scout troop aided in folding a flag that was then given to a fallen service member's widow. Any opportunity actually that we can take as a nation to pause and give thanks for those that have given up their lives so we can celebrate freedom and enjoy our democracy, we should do this. And uh, it doesn't have to just be Memorial Day, but this is the day we've set aside to gather as a nation. He also says after remembering and honoring the fallen, you should celebrate the freedom of being able to celebrate the holiday that these men and women gave us all. 
Just over the state line, two storms that swept through Iowa only a few months ago left one cemetery ravaged. After seeing the damage, the community came together and repaired the grounds just in time for Memorial Day today. Todd Magel shows us the transformation. Here in the Winterset Town Square, there's not much evidence of the tornado damage. It's a much different story in the Winterset Cemetery. More than a thousand flags decorate the Winterset Cemetery on this Memorial Day weekend. And now after the March tornado and the April windstorm did so much damage here, the entire cemetery is finally open again. It's amazing what the community does to come together in times of need. Ron Beam says it's taken more than a month to clean up the veterans area of the cemetery. They've taken down several trees ripped up by the storms and they're working to repair so many broken gravestones. A few were snapped in half, some blew over, and others were uprooted last month. Some of these stones date back to the Civil War. And now the last week or so, they've got all the trees cut down and people can get back down in there and, and take a look at it and, and see the graves again and put their flowers on them. Winterset residents have not forgotten about the tornado and storm survivors. Sunday night, the owners of the Drift Tap Room and Restaurant got together. It's a fundraiser at the barn in Lone Oaks Farm. A $50 donation will help rebuild the cemetery and help out others still recovering from the tornado. That includes a barbecue dinner, homemade pies, and a square dance. It's a chance to lend a helping hand. It's resilient and, and you know, folks, um, you know, help each other out as, as you well know, you know, in the stories you guys have done here in the last few weeks here in Winterset, and people just step up and help. And if you'd like to donate to help clean up some of the damage here in Winterset, you can give to the Disaster Recovery Fund. In Winterset, Todd Magel, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's news leader. And this afternoon, I took a ride with the Nebraska State Patrol Trooper to see how road conditions have been over Memorial Day weekend. Trooper Jeff Rutan shared that more officers have been out patrolling overnight to keep an eye out for distracted or impaired drivers. He said he hasn't encountered any impaired drivers during the day, but he has seen some drivers speeding. Anytime we have increased traffic, there are, you know, we get we see higher speeds. Weekends in general we do, uh, but seems like during the summer that really picks up, becomes a problem. He went on to explain that the higher the volume of vehicles on the road, the bigger the chance of an accident. So keep your eyes on the road, slow down, and be safe. As Memorial Day weekend wraps up, if you find that you had a little too much to drink, there are services available to help make sure that you arrive safely back home. AAA is offering a free towing service all across Nebraska for members and non-members alike. This service is available, but there are some restrictions as far as how many people are allowed to be picked up per call. If you call 855-2 to go, um, a AAA tow truck driver will come and, and, and pick one individual up and their vehicle and, and tow them to a safe place within 10 miles of where they are um, over the holiday weekend. AAA hopes that people use this service to keep the roads safe, as this is a busy travel holiday. The expected number of travelers this week on a national basis is 39.2 million, which is an increase even over last year with the number of travelers back on the road. As we're somewhat emerging from the pandemic, uh, people want to get out and about. Of that 39 million, approximately 34 million will be in their cars. Um, so it's not just about protecting, you know, being safe for impaired and distracted drivers. It's about being safe because of the numbers on the road. Again, this is a free towing service for both AAA members and non-members. It is a confidential service and will continue to be offered all across Nebraska until 6 in the morning on Tuesday. Windy, warm, and a little cloudy this weekend. Let's check in with meteorologist Malcolm Byron to see what's in store for us next. Well, Ariana made it up into the upper 80s this afternoon, but the number one comment I got around the newsroom today was just how windy it was. So uh, let's take a live look outside over our Groundworks uh, camera looking outside the station. Look at the trees just blowing around in the wind there. Uh, these are sustained winds out of the southwest at 23 miles per hour at Lincoln Airport. At this point in time, uh, we see sustained winds uh, just above 30 miles per hour out towards York, Aurora and Hastings. Wind gusts even higher, 45 miles per hour wind gusts at this point at Lincoln Airport. Now we are dry 
high across southeast Nebraska right now, but a couple of hours ago we had a couple uh, isolated storms moving on by very isolated in scope. Those have since pushed into Iowa. Now we are watching some thunderstorm activity moving across the central part of the state right now. A sub severe stuff right now, but uh, we are looking at wind gusts in the ballpark of perhaps a 40 to 50 miles per hour within uh, the, that thunderstorm complex moving into northeast Nebraska. So sub severe stuff there right now. Now as far as instability is concerned across southeast Nebraska, it's on the lower end of things. You have to go towards Richardson County to where you get towards the moderate instability value. So the best chance for storms this evening in southeast Nebraska looks like it's going to be the, to the southeast of Lincoln, but we can't rule it out. Nevertheless, I'd see after six o'clock is fair game. An isolated thunderstorm around eight o'clock is possible. But again, the best chance to the southeast. Uh, Ariana will have a closer look at that coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you for always keeping us updated mm -hmm. on that severe weather possibility. And to Texas now, as more details are being released out of Uvalde, the Justice Department has announced they will look into the delayed police response and funerals for the 21 victims soon to begin. ABC's Rena Roy brings us new video from that horrific day. On this Memorial Day, the nation remembering not only those who served, but also the 21 victims of the Uvalde school shooting. Keep in your prayers the people of Uvalde, Texas. What happened in Uvalde was a horrific act of evil. New video obtained by ABC News showing the horror after the gunman opened fire at Robb Elementary. Okay, they're getting the kids out. Police officers breaking windows trying to rescue children. The video also capturing what appears to be dispatch audio telling officers the gunman was in a classroom with children that needed help. Nine-year-old survivor Daniel Garza remembering the moment he saw the shooter. He was he's like staring at like people through a little window. And what was he doing? He was just like standing there with his gun, like tapping on like the window. Authorities say he was inside the school for 77 minutes before law enforcement breached the locked door with a key and killed him. The Texas Department of Public Safety says the school district's police chief wrongly believed the situation turned into a barricaded subject and was no longer an active shooter, ordering tactical teams not to go in. Sources tell ABC those teams eventually decided to go in. The Department of Justice now launching a review into law enforcement's response. Funerals began today for some of the victims. They'll be taking place almost every single day for the next two and a half weeks. Another reminder of just how many people are grieving in this tragedy. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And coming up, what summer favorite food to avoid for a while and be aware of as it has caused some people to become ill. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
The FDA issuing a warning. An investigation suggests some store-bought strawberries distributed nationwide may can be connected to hepatitis outbreak. Mandy Gaither has today's Health Minute. A hepatitis A outbreak, 17 cases identified in California, Minnesota, and North Dakota, leading to 12 hospitalizations, according to the FDA. The agency is now investigating a potential link between the cases and fresh organic strawberries branded as Fresh Campo and HEB, purchased between March 5th and April 25th. They were distributed nationwide at a number of retailers, including Aldi, HEB, Kroger, Safeway, Sprouts Farmers Market, Trader Joe's, Walmart, Wise Markets, and Winco Foods. More products may be included as the investigation is ongoing. While the potentially affected strawberries are now past their shelf life, the FDA says people who froze them for later use shouldn't eat them, throw them away. The CDC says symptoms of hepatitis A usually appear 15 to 50 days after eating or drinking contaminated food or water and include fatigue, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, jaundice, dark urine, and pale stool. Anyone who thinks they may have symptoms after eating the strawberries should contact their health care provider. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Now, your Storm Alert Team forecast with meteorologist Malcolm Byron. Hey, check this out. Look off in the distance over our Southeast Community College camera to the east and you see some thunderstorms towering up uh, in the distance. Now this is off towards the east and those storms are moving away from us. Uh, they are currently in Iowa. Uh, here they are on satellite and radar imagery right now again moving away from us and they actually developed over southeast Nebraska. They had a really hard time developing. They initially fired over Gage County and then they continue to pull off towards the northeast. So we're dry across southeast Nebraska at this point in time. Uh, another area in the state where we're watching some shower and thunderstorm activity is in the central part of the state and this activity uh, is scooting off to the northeast. I do not expect this activity to arrive in southeast Nebraska. However, there is a storm chance for some later on this evening. Those storms just haven't developed yet. A uh, stormcast six o'clock shows mostly dry conditions. However, going forward, I'd say after six o'clock, it's fair game in southeast Nebraska. Uh, this model shows a stray shower arriving in Lancaster County around seven o'clock past six o'clock. I don't think we can rule out a stray shower, but then models are showing uh, a more organized line of thunderstorms developing somewhere in southeast Nebraska. I think uh, based off the latest indications, it'll mainly be to the southeast of the capital city. It'll be a close call, though, it'll be very close to Lincoln. So we'll have to keep an eye on it nevertheless, but I think the best chance will be to the southeast, closer to Beatrice, uh, Pawnee City, and even going in towards Falls City. And this line of storms could be on the strong to severe side with damaging winds, large hail, and maybe even an isolated tornado, not out of the question. So Storm Prediction Center has placed us under a slight risk for severe weather, but you'll see Lincoln's very close to the back edge of this. Again, the best chance for severe storms, along with thunderstorm activity altogether, uh, is to the southeast of the capital city tonight. Of course, we will be keeping an eye on things throughout the course of the evening. As we go into the overnight hours, all this activity pushes off towards the southeast into Iowa, Missouri, and Kansas. For the majority of the overnight hours, we will be dry across southeast Nebraska. However, going in towards the morning commute, this activity may try to slowly crop back up into southern Nebraska. Not severe activity, just some isolated shower activity, maybe for uh, Hebron, Fairbury, Beatrice, and in towards Pawnee City. Uh, it may be a stretch uh, to get these up towards Lincoln. So I do think for the overnight hours, we will be mostly dry in the capital city. Uh, it's drier and cooler, also less windy, 56 degrees, the overnight low. It'll also stay less windy going into Tuesday, 79 degrees, the forecast high. It's a cooler day, also a little bit less humid as well. But I want to focus on this less windy. That'll sure be nice because today uh, we have wind gusts upwards of 50 to 60 miles per hour, depending on where you are. The highest wind gusts I've seen so far at Lincoln Airport was 53 miles per hour. Right now we're gusting out of 45 miles per hour at Lincoln Airport. And as a result, we have a wind advisory in effect for the tan shaded counties, although it is even windy uh, if you are not not within this wind advisory, but notice the expiration time eight o'clock tonight. And because as we go into the evening hours, the wind speeds are just going to torpedo uh, into the ground. We will be a lot less windy for the overnight hours for sure. So a nice day on Tuesday, less humid, 79 degrees, quite a bit of sunshine. 
but then clouds begin to return on Wednesday morning. Another shower chance. I'm not saying storm chance because check out the high temperature there. 68 degrees we will be in the cooler air mass, so I don't think we're going to see a lot of widespread storm activity uh, nor severe weather. But then we the sunshine returns on Thursday. We're a little bit warmer as a result. 77 degrees there and back up into the 80s by Friday. Ariana. Yes, thank you again, Malcolm, and we'll have some more news plus a final look at our forecast when we return. Stay with us. With so much at Stonehenge is paying tribute to the Queen to celebrate the Platinum Jubilee, and a group of high schoolers got quite the surprise for their prom. Here's today's Take a Look at This. Stonehenge, one of England's most iconic monuments, gets a colorful makeover. Take a look. To celebrate Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee, images of the monarch from each decade of her reign have been projected onto the ancient structure. Stonehenge was built by the ancient Britons around 2500 BC, any questions about its original purpose are still unanswered. And speaking of celebrating milestones, students who were displaced by wildfires in New Mexico got a second chance at having a prom. The governor stepped in and hosted the party at the governor's mansion. Students from Mora High School got to dance under the stars. And finally, Mother Nature putting on a show of her own. Astronomers are forecasting a chance of a spectacular meteor shower late Monday night or early Tuesday morning. Some astronomers say the Tau Herculean meteor shower, if it occurs, could light up the sky with as many as a thousand shooting stars in an hour. NASA's Meteor and Environment Office says the peak may be around 1 a.m. on the East Coast Tuesday and should be visible high in the sky over North America. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jen Sullivan.
And now let's get a final look at our forecast. Malcolm, what do we got going on? Ariana, I wish I was more thrilled about our rain chances for Lincoln because boy, we could really use the rain. However, there is a chance for storms for some uh, across southeast Nebraska. I think the best chance will be just to the southeast of Lincoln. We can't completely rule it out, but again, the best chance will be to the southeast. Any time after 6 o'clock is fair game, and by 10 o'clock, it looks like things will start to be scooting on out of here. Uh, 77 degrees by 8 o'clock, 70 degrees by 10 o'clock tonight. We'll give you a look at Stormcast. This particular run of Stormcast shows that little green blob extending from Crete just to the northwest of the capital city around 7 o'clock. So those are those stray showers that we mentioned uh, in Maine weather just a few minutes ago. But then uh, the best chance again off towards the southeast is seeing a line of thunderstorms develop and that could be on the strong to severe side. So of course we'll be watching that throughout the course of the evening as it does uh, include some of the channel 8 viewing area. So of course we'll be watching that on air and online providing updates throughout the rest of the evening. Awesome. Thank you Malcolm and thank you all for joining us tonight. World News Tonight is next and make sure to join us right back here tonight at 6. With the Channel 8 Eyewitness News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. At Comfort Made Mattress Factory, we build each mattress specifically for you, right here in our locally owned store. We can even make his side different than hers, backed by our lifetime comfort guarantee. Closed captioning on Channel 8 Eyewitness News is brought to you by Christensen Hearing Analytics. Bags are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road.